Hello, I'm David Mandel and I'm going to do a video on, uh, we're going to discuss the root file system on a Linux or Unix system and just survey what is where and um, um, starting at the root and going down into where the executables are, um, where the files in slash etc, um, so on and so forth. Uh, kind of as outlined here um, and uh, we'll discuss things as we go. Okay, I could either do this as using a graphical user interface, which a lot of Windows people might be used to, or people who have grown up and with uh, Unix or Linux will probably do this from a command line user interface. Let me show you the graphical user interface. Um, we'll use Dolphin here. If I use Dolphin, I go up to the root and I can see my root file system. I can go down into each directory and look what's in each directory, so on and so forth. Um, should we do it that way or should, no, nah, I, I feel more comfortable doing it from the command line. So we'll do it from the command line. Okay, let's go to root. Um, uh, we'll go up to the root directory, which is cd slash, um, sl slash, <laughs> and then we'll do an ls command and we get things here which are our files and we'll start discussing our uh, files. Now everything in Unix is a file. That's a ba basic fundamental thing to remember. Unix doesn't doesn't deal with anything except files. If it's a printer, if it's a camera, if it's a, a disk, they're going to pretend it's a file. So one of the fundamentals in Unix is everything is a file. Okay. Um, so these are files, even though these guys in blue are actually directories. And um, they generally, the root system itself will be really clean. You should keep it really, really clean and add very little to it. I have added a few files. The truth is this file here came from somewhere. I don't know what that is. Um, it shouldn't be there. Um, I probably don't have access rights to take that out. If I do an ls minus l, I can see my access rights. And unless I become root, I do not have rights to move, remove that file. Um, so I won't remove it. Uh, these files here, um, I keep a file up at the root level of my tree, giving me a little history of backups. That's actually my own personal file. And I feel, you know, don't put a lot at the root level, but once in a while it's appropriate to put something up there. I feel that a backup history of the root directory is an appropriate thing to keep at root. Um, uh, alt system is non-standard. That's one of my inventions. Um, I'll discuss that someday later. Uh, different videos. Backups is also one of my file systems. It's got a big clump of data in it that, that I keep. Um, and, you know, there could be uh, some other files or directories that I keep at the top level partition or top level root as well. There rarely is, well, sometimes there's, I've got two or three other names that I occasionally use. Um, well, actually there is one here. Windows is one of my own inventions. That's probably the mount points I use for mounting a disk from the win Windows partition on my system or something of that type. And indeed, that's what it is. Okay, all the other things though are very standard, so. Let us, whoops, let us look at this directory system again and let's look at a few of these. Um, slash USR we'll start with because slash USR is a really strange guy. I don't know why it exists, but it exists on almost all Unix systems. It's B 
become, well, it is pretty standard. I suspect way back in the old, old, old days of Unix, they ran out of space at the root level and didn't know what to do except add another directory that they could use as a mount point for adding another disk drive. Truth is, I, that's my own invented history. I don't know what happened. But it has a lot, the, a lot of the system is down under slash USR. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that's just the way it is. Let's look at an example here. Slash bin. Slash bin. We'll go down into slash bin. Slash bin. If you look at these, you'll find, well, how many files are there? If I do ls and pipe that to the uh, w word count command, wc, it says that I've got 150 lines, 150 words, and 1,200 and some characters. So there's 150 files there. OK. Or I could do it. A better answer might be to do this that command, which just gives me 150. Anyway, um, s these here are, uh, we can recognize some of the names here, DD, DD Rescue, um, MKDIR, SU. Well, these look kind of like commands to me. And indeed, this is a location where we keep our commands. Um, all the commands on the system. Well, not all of them. Most of the commands on the system. Except there's another place, too. If I look over at slash USR and do an ls there, I find another bin directory. So let's do ls slash USR slash bin. And guess what? I get more commands. And these are just system commands uh, that anybody can, well, given the right permissions, anybody can use. So uh, a lot of commands are kept here. So the two places where most of your commands are kept, we'll go over here, and I'll just write a little down in here. Um, the two places where your commands are kept, for the most part, are slash bin and slash usr slash bin are, is your command directory. OK. Now, there may be commands kept in other places as well, like if I add a like my personal commands, I might keep in my own personal area under my home directory in another directory called my commands or 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 maybe bin. Bin. I like the name bin. I'd probably use the name bin. So it would be slash, let's see, my home directory is slash D-E-M, I'm sorry, slash home slash D E uh, D um, D mandel slash bin. OK. And if I got a system from, you know, some word processing system, it might be put into the main directories, slash bin and slash usr slash bin, or they might put it someplace else. And then you'd have to execute the command in this other location, which you could do by what? appending that to your path statement, or and then you wouldn't even know about it. OK. Um, going back here, let's go up here, back to our root, look at other things. We've got a new command here, um, a, a new area here called slash boot. What is in the boot uh, directory? I should have put boot in there. but OK. In the boot directory, we have basically all the information needed to boot the system. This is where the, the um, grub 
configuration lies. Actually, the Grub executable is in here. Uh, Grub is the common is a commonly used um, bootloader, and that's the software that starts loading your system when you boot. This also has the kernel of your operating system, everything you need to boot. And that's usually on the, well, that's usually in slash boot in the root partition. Does it have to be there? I don't know. Um, that's where it always is. Um, OK, another directory. Oh, uh, another directory is there was sbin. There's bin. Well, there's a directory called sbin, which is a little bit like bin. So we'll cover it now. Let's look at what's in sbin. sbin has oh, funny things in it, like um, Oh, various mount commands, FSCK, if anybody knows what that is, that is um, for um, uh, fixing up a corrupted file system, for uh, repairing your file system after crashes. Um, make swap is for formatting your swap partition. Um, MKFS is for um, formatting a hard drive. So these are basically system commands. So what's in slash bin is the system commands, Sla or slash sbin, slash sbin. And guess what? There may also be a directory, slash usr slash sbin, which has um, Looks like it has the same files. I'm not sure, um, but but actually, which may have additional system files, um, or maybe the same system files. But 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 it's also got system commands that you use slash slash um, usr slash sbin system. SGIN, bin, SBIN, system commands. Now, I was a little vague on whether this had the same, um, on, on whether these two directories have the same files or have different files. Let me look over here at uh, slash USR and they probably have different files, but sometimes de, 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 um, I got something going on here that I got to take care of. Hello? David Mandel here. Spam phone calls. Damn it. Um, excuse me. Anyway, um, want to take a loan? OK. Uh, sorry about the distraction. I should have turned my phone off. Phones off, all of them. OK, anyway, um, slash bin and slash USR slash bin. Sometimes slash USR slash bin just has additional commands over what bin has. Other times they may actually be a link to slash sbin slash bin may be a link to slash bin or the other way around. So all the commands are put in one directory and they just make them links to one another. The same goes for slash sbin and slash usr slash sbin. On some systems uh, they're just it's the same files, the same files. On other systems, it's additional files. OK. Um, I just got the 15 minute warning, but we'll continue on anyway. Um, <clears throat> OK, the next directory that we're going to discuss is slash etc. 
once again we're at slash etc and it's got lots of files in it and let's just like take a look at a couple of the files slash etc has all of your configuration files in it well not all there is no such thing in unix there's always exceptions but basically it's where we keep the system configuration files it's the same as in windows we have the registry database in unix's including Linux, there's a ten, there, for the most part, they keep configuration in plain ASCII files. They're very readable. It's very easy to find information and to change information. All you need to do is use a text editor and you can change the way certain subsystems work. Um, one of the key files in a system is of course our file password which we won't discuss much here but that's where all the users on the system that's where their information is kept it's kept under slash um, in the password file and in the uh, I think their password is kept in a file called shadow and there's also a file called group, which is kind of related. Um, in a way, that's all the information about users on the system. Um, um, sometimes there's subdirectories that keep information. I keep configuration information on certain subsystems. I think there's one here called SSH. That's information stored about. Um, uh, using the SSH command to go from one system to another system. And we can actually change the way SSH works. Suppose I want to change the way the SSH uh, server works. Now, I'm not, I probably need to be root to change this, but I don't want to change it anyway. We'll just look at it. And maybe I can't read it is not readable uh, because I don't have access rights. OK, let me just become root for a second. sudo. Um, vi. Uh, we'll do edit it in the vi editor. sshd config. Oh, that's so blue, it's hard to see. Uh, I don't like that at all. I could change the background, but not in a short video here. Anyway, these basically show are things relating to how many login attempts you get to make. Uh, is root permitted to SSH into your system? Uh, does it use some sort of key authorization as opposed to password authorization? Um, all sorts of stuff, which actually is another topic, a very important topic, but not to be covered here. Just an idea of the, of the flavor of what's in this thing. Um, here's another file, host name. Oh, let's go up here. Um, there's a file here called hostname. Hostname. Guess what? That's the name of the system. If I want to change the name of my system, I suspect there's a command for changing the name of the system. But I could just go in and edit this file. And sometimes some of these changes I use, I, I use commands to make the changes. Other times, uh, sometimes I even use the GUI. Other times, though, I just make the change by going in and editing the file. Um, that's why it's important to know where these files are and what they do. And with time, your experience, with experience, your knowledge of all this stuff grows. The files are really nice because they are sort of really pretty much the same on 
all Unix systems. doesn't have to be Linux. It can be anything. OK. There's little differences. You know, it's like the differences between driving a car. The gear shift levers are in different places and, you know, things of that type. But nothing big. OK. Let's go back to our root directory. Let's look at another file system we have here. Um, slash etc we've done. Slash um, dev. Slash dev. This is an important file system for some reason. I don't know why, but they say it is. It's got lots of stuff in it. That must be important stuff because, you know, all the books say they are. It, it is. So um, let's look at a couple of these files. Let's look at, well, let's look at the SD files. There's a mess of SD files. How long is that? Oh, how long is that file? I, I thought ls minus l gave me the length of a file, but it sure doesn't here. It's got everything really weird. Um, one thing, there's a B over here. Um, well, which I'm not familiar with. Um, and then there's a couple numbers here. Um, and a number here. And well, what it turns out, the files kept in slash dev are called special files. And what they are is, remember I said everything on a Unix system is a file. Well, they need a place to kind of store their these special files um, that are things like disk drives. So SDA is probably, uh, SDA would be the first a SCSI or um, SATA um, disk drive. I think if it's an IDE disk drive, which nobody uses anymore, I think it would be called H, uh, HDA. Yeah, on most systems. Not always, but most systems. Also, these names are very different on a non-Linux Unix system. The, the concept's the same. They're still in slash dev, but the names are really different. Um, because these are special files, they could either be um, a character type file or a block type file. Disk drives read and write by the block. So they put a B up here for block. I've, I'm sorry, I can't remember the, expect, uh, the exact name, but block style type file. And these numbers here are basically the major and minor codes. The major code on a disk, or at least this disk, I think this uh, on a disk is 8. Well, usually it doesn't have to be 8. So you know, on a Linux system, it will be 8. It may not be that on a Solaris system. And then the minor uh, number is associated with the kind of a sub-category of that device. <coughs> so um, there, and what you have here is um, SDA is your first disk drive. The first disk drive, the first partition of the first disk drive will be SDA1. The second partition of the first disk drive will be SDA2, or yeah, A2. The third partition, <coughs> and so on. Um, SDB, and you have SDB1, um, um, 2, 3, I don't know, what not. Uh, the third disk drive is an SDC, and I don't see any partitions on that disk drive. Apparently, there must be two disk drives on this system. Uh, SDA, SDB, SDB seems to have a lot of partitions. SDA has, well, maybe three partitions. OK, that's basically um, the breakdown. And then, you know, in, S, in the dev directory, you'll have other devices. 
Um, the TTYs are usually associated with uh, some sort of terminal device. Maybe your um, uh, those alphanumeric consoles, like when you press Alt Control F1, Alt Control F2, or possibly some sort of device like if you've connected an ASCII terminal, whatever that is, they're dead today. But if you connected an ASCII terminal to your um, um, computer, that would be a TTY of some sort. Um, uh, printers might be um, LPs. Printers are probably uh, parallel port printers are probably the LP type things over here. Or if they're um, USB printers, uh, there's a whole directory of USB stuff down there. So it might be down in that area. Um, there's also a file, a couple oddball files here. There's a file here called random. That's actually I can use that file by doing something like this. Well, and what, what it is is actually a random number generator. It will generate random numbers for me. I'd have to look up exactly how it's used. But the random command, I think, will use Whoop. Maybe. Well, the, the, the system's random number generator will use this. Um, there's a command here called dev, or called null. Uh, I mean, there's a file here called null. And what that is, is the file that is thin air. When I send information like, oh, slash, readme, I send that to slash dev slash null. That's a way of just sending things out into the air and um, or into e ether space, wherever. Sending it to heaven. And um, I can just throw stuff away that way. And um, sometimes, you know, if I know I'm going to get a lot of error messages and I don't want to listen to the error messages that come out, I might do that. And that, of course, there were no error messages in this, but uh, that will um, um, throw the error messages out into outer space. OK, anything else? Well, that gives you an idea of just the type of stuff in this area. Anything else of crucial importance? Yes, indeed, there is. This is going to be a long video, but. Um, The lib and um, slash lib sixty and uh, slash lib and slash lib sixty four contains libraries and stuff that are used by commands as they run. That's really important stuff. I won't go into the details, but programmers know and love the, uh, the, the things in that directory. Slash media is a relatively new directory, and that is. Because everything in Unix is a root file system. There is root, and everything under it is root, is, is, is in this tree structure. We don't have things like disk A and disk B. When you're on the system, you don't know what disk you're on at any moment, not unless you look for it. But everything is transparent. And they may even change it overnight. And you know, next day, you're using the same tree, but it's on a different disk drive. Well, so they need mount points, just empty directories, mount points to mount disk on. Slash media is generally where we mount um, oddball stuff now, like, a, um, like if I plug in a um, flashcard. Whoops. Or one of these. I need some place to mount that. And the, those get mounted. Those get mounted in that area. So that's cool. Um, um, 
slash MNN is where things used to get mounted and that's where I might I might use that to mount more permanent stuff. Uh, things that are going to be around all the time. If I've got disk that I uh, like disk partitions that I mount now and then, I'll probably mount them under slash um, MNT or more likely I will create a subdirectory under slash MMT and mount them down under there. Um, we'll get to that later. Slash opt is actually where they often put um, software that they don't want to just splatter all over the system, like software that came from some special group, like the GRASS uh, GIS group. They might put a directory there, GRASS, or um, D. in this case, there's DX and Google. I don't know what's in Google. And KDE. KDE. 3, which is my graphical environment, was put in this area instead of putting it in slash bin and slash live and just splattering it every place. Um, I don't know why, because that would have been just fine to do with KDE, but they chose to do it this way. DX is a visualization, graphical visualization system built by IBM, open source, a cool system. And they put that, they decided just to keep that as a whole, all as a group down under uh, the op directory. Let's look at DX. Oops. Slash opt slash DX. And you see that they have a whole tree structure there with their, their own bin, their own bin in Linux, their own docs for documentation, you know, so on and so forth. OK, going back to root. Well, there's some other directories here. Um, oh, slash root is, there's nothing too important here. I'm not allowed in there unless I become root. But slash root is the home directory for root. There is a tendency to put the home directory for root on the root partition because if things are really going, you really want the home directory for root to get mounted no matter what. So by putting it off on like slash home is actually usually is often its own disk or its own partition or several of them. And you know, if something's going really wrong, that might not get mounted right. And you really do want to get um, the home directory for root mounted because if you want to repair the system, you want to be able to log on as root. Um, there's, of course, workarounds, but you don't want to have to do the workarounds. Um, OK. Oh, another one we should look at is slash var. Slash var contains a lot of stuff. Slash var contains, well, among other things, it contains your system log files and uh, Unix tends to keep logs on anything and everything. So this is your system log files and uh, they're usually kept down here. This, they're going to grow with time because as you do more things, more things get logged. So these things grow with time. They get big, they get ugly. And that means this whole directory gets big and ugly at times. Um, and it's hard. You just don't know what's going on because it, it can grow with time. So you, it's hard to estimate its time, size. You're never sure how much space to leave for it. Um, other things under slash var. Um, well, one thing under slash var is spool. Spool has a lot of stuff in it. Um, there's a directory here called mail. Mail most likely has copies of all the mail going in and out, going in and out of the system until somebody uses them and deletes them. Maybe it will have, if you're using something called IMAP, it may have permanent copies of everybody's directories or everybody's mail, um, mail files there. Um, 
likewise, when mail goes out of the system, it may have to stay in there for a while until the system that's supposed to get it next is, is actually up and online and says, hey, I'm ready to accept mail. So um, it will be a storage space for mail. Um, another thing that might be in there or that is in there is LDP. LDP or something like LDP is basically for your print queues. Like if you're sending a lot of stuff to a printer, you type the LP or LPR command, you send it to the printer. What actually happens is a copy of that file will go into the LP, into a queue under LPD, and it will stay there until somebody puts paper in the printer or something or turns the printer on inst because it's not an immediate process. Sometimes there could be, you know, hundreds or thousands of files waiting to be printed and they're all stored in the uh, in this area. Um, post, oh, Postfix. Postfix is another mail system. Maybe Postfix keeps its stuff under Postfix instead of mail or, or I'm not sure. Um, Cron is where scheduled jobs are kept. That usually doesn't get very big. Uh, it's important, but normally doesn't get big. Okay, anyway, there's stuff down there. And the big thing about slash var is it, its size is hard to predict. Sometimes they can get huge, huge, huge. As a result, sometimes they're put on separate partitions on a system because it's, it used to be really nasty if the root partition got to 100%. It's better now, but it's still not a good thing. You don't want root partition to get to 100%. And so there's a tendency, sometimes they will put the directories that expand a lot, they might put on a separate partition. The two of those are slash var and slash temp. Where's slash temp? Ah, there it is. In green down here, slash temp. Slash temp is basically an area where um, the temporary files are kept. And it should be cleaned out every so often and just delete everything in it. Or there's probably a system job that deletes everything in it uh, every so often. It looks like my stuff hasn't been deleted in a while. but And it just keeps temporary files that users need as they're doing things. OK. Um, that is pretty much a survey of all the files kept in um, the root directory. Oh, I should mention slash home, of course. Slash home, uh, you got to keep your user's home directory someplace. The tradition in the Linux world has, and many Unixes, has been to keep the uh, user's home directories in an area under slash home. Um, and each user has their own area, you know, slash home, slash user one, slash home, slash user two, slash home, slash user three. On big systems with thousands of users, they may even break it up more. There may be a slash home slash A for all the users with, whose last names start with A, slash home slash B, which is a directory that keeps all the users whose last name starts with B, so on and so forth. Um, home files do not have to be kept under slash home. Um, some Unixes in the past used to use slash u, just u for user, and keep everything there. Um, roots, home directory is usually kept under slash root on the root directory. Don't keep other users on the root directory, but, um, but I'm just saying users' home directories do not have to be stored under slash, um, slash home. But 
most Unix systems and nearly all the Unix systems that you'll be using, they are stored there. Well, Android doesn't store them there. Okay. Um, but Fedora, um, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, um, all of those systems do. So that's cool. Okay, that is everything I had to say, and this um, video went on a little longer than I anticipated, but hey, mm, let's, um, you know, so um, with that, I will say bye-bye, bye-bye.